Hello, this is Dylan Berry. Welcome to Music Industry Talks. Today on the show, I've got Mr. Billy O'Connell. Billy O'Connell ran Sire Records, managed the Pixies, L7, a bunch of seminal artists back in late 90s, early 2000s. Since then, he's gone on to become a, I think he's a PhD doctorate or some sort of highly decorated educator and works at the University of New Orleans teaching music business and has a wealth of knowledge about that space. Also, Mr. Christian Reese from the band Nephew and also from Nordic LA, also my business partner in Nordic LA. Uh, he is a wealth of knowledge as well and works with many startups in the creative culture industries. Let's get into it, okay? Glad to have you both on. Uh, Billy, let's start with you, man. What what are you up to these days post, uh, or ra rather, uh, zombie apocalypse, Bill? Yeah. Well, I have two particular um, cohorts that I'm working with an awful lot. One would be um, business people who are at a loss. Two would be artists and, and musicians who are at a loss. It looks like everybody's trying to solve a problem. I approach these things from a, in a very holistic way. I'm about driving happiness and sustainability uh, in music, but I believe that you do that by doing things right. And so there's been a lot of need for that kind of rehabilitation of one's business infrastructure during this time. And then leveraging approaches to audience building retention uh, using the tools that we have available to us. And, and there's been some really interesting innovation that I've seen. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And, um, and I've seen an awful lot of um, people who just uh, decided to make this a positive time. All of us, no matter what level of professionalism you're at in the industry, uh, need to know the new tricks and the new things that are happening and the new trends and, and where the opportunities are, especially right now. Um, Christian, let, let's kick to you. Obviously, um, you know, last year you had one of the, the biggest tours uh, of your career, I think. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Last year we did our biggest arena tour and I think the biggest in Denmark uh, ever, selling more than 70,000 tickets. Of course, when uh, the corona hit here, I was really grateful about uh, it was not a year ago but but now on the other hand of course I'm, i feel really sorry if, um, about my my colleague's situation we have these support packages for almost everyone in denmark but for the big artists it's really hard because usually they tour every maybe third or fourth year so it's it there's no compensa compensation that can help them out of the situation here it, it's an interesting thing also christian you've you've done a lot of things with events cultural exports. Tell us a little bit about your history with Volcano and the music festival. Through my ca career, while playing in the band, I always had the, the, the manager role in the band. Uh, I kind of expanded that into other music ventures. Uh, among that, I, I was part of starting a festival called the uh, Heartland Festival in Denmark. Um, I was running a music venue called the Bremen Theater in Copenhagen for a few years. And uh, We've been managing around 25 of the biggest Danish rock, electro rock acts for, uh, for the years. I was I was a little bit afraid of how people would, would, would act or react to the situation. Of course, it's been a hard time, but I guess there's always stuff to deal with. And, and I think for us, we'll definitely find a way forward. And I see that for a lot of my colleagues. I saw recently I used to manage a Danish band called Who Made Who. They did a concert on this this kind of boat floating through the harbor of Copenhagen, playing for few people, you know, walking around on, on the shore. Um, that was super cool. So I just see a lot of creative things that probably never would have happened if, if we didn't have this situation. Billy, I'll kick to you. What are some of the things that you're seeing that are little gold nuggets in this rubble that we're in right now? A lot of fans' expectations are fairly reduced right now. It's not an awful time to do some basically graceful and decent things as an artist and really exceed your fans' expectations. There was a, um, a band that I saw that uh, distributed on Instagram um, a tour poster, you know, with, with the dates of their tour. And the tour was uh, rooms in their house. So it was like, you know, Monday, the 12th of April, uh, the kitchen. Uh, and, and it looked exactly like a tour poster. And it was really enjoyable to the fans. They just tripped on it. They loved the whole thing. And they loved being having it turned into an event. Christian, let's, let's, uh, I just want to talk to you because I know you're an expert on brands and how art and culture can service brands to, to meet their objectives. So what opportunities are there to partner or pair with brands to expose music to the general public? I, I do believe that the brands are actually getting more and more open, at least in this side of the world, to 
to to kind of partner up with some of the creative heads out there. So I think it, it, it's a good chance now because people, they need to keep pushing. They need to come back now when the world is slowly opening up. We need to drive export and, and the international side a lot. Otherwise, the economy will, will, will go slow. So I think it's a good time actually for artists right now also to, to tap into that, that scene. So I think like if you can transform that what you do into a, a strong story, and of course you have a professional setup around you, I think it's, it's time to reach out because the brains need to get out there. Um, let's get right to different opportunities. Obviously the world's changed right now. Touring is sort of slashed for a while. What are market opportunities right now? I mean, maybe list three things, Billy, that you see are key opportunities for music makers on a professional and maybe an independent level. If we're, if we're looking for three points, I would say one, uh, figure out how to not only use social platforms to drive those points of contact, but incentivize people into something you own, into your website, onto your mailing list, onto a text messaging list, something that gets people into your property because we need to get off these platforms that are standing on the backs of the artist. So that leads me into my second point, which is to create content. And I don't care what content is, but it has to be native to you, natural to you. And it is a little unseemly, perhaps, to, to write a party, party, party song right now, but you can create something that is appropriate for the moment. And escapism is appropriate in this moment. It's okay, we all need a break from time to time. Entertainment is its own kind of medicine. The, the third point would be that use this opportunity to set into motion uh, operational goals and, and operational procedures that are gonna move forward with you in the kind of continuing COVID reality, but also in a post COVID reality. This is a chance for us to bond with our audiences and for us to, to know these people the way you know any other friend. I'm asking one more question. Tools that are, are your recommendation for people to use. We got TikTok, we got YouTube, we got what, what is really the, the hot exposure point right now? I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that I think is perhaps unpopular, which is there are two areas of uh, potential, I would say, unthrottled uh, reach. You know, organic reach only exists in like two platforms right now. One is TikTok and one is LinkedIn. Now, I do think both can be appropriate to an artist and it is appropriate for the business relationship for the, or for the business spokesperson to use LinkedIn in that way. But the penetration, the organic reach cannot be dismissed um, and it's really valuable. As for TikTok, yeah, I mean, TikTok is a little jokey right now, but just like any other new technology, humor and outrage is, 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 is essentially how they crack open and establish their footing. But there is a real need to leverage that one minute or less video for an artist. And I think that that access, that, that impression that, that an artist can create, that you're giving access to your world it's not really that you're laying yourself bare. It's that you're giving people a view through the keyhole. They feel like you're sharing everything with them, but you're not, you're curating a view. And TikTok can be great for that. I really enjoy hearing what you're saying that like the way that you're thinking, representing artists, I think it's, it's a really, really strong approach. And I think just to add to that also, when we talk about the different platforms like TikTok and so on, Actually, something that I, I've been looking into now is like, how can we kind of build the ambassador network? How can we find the intimate ways where we can only meet 10 or uh, up to 50 people? I was in my studio yesterday and I talked with the folks there. Why don't we do like small shows where we invite the, the, the core fans and we get to know them because those are the people that are building our future. And right now, uh, everyone is trying to push a lot of content out there. I think it's, it's, it's taking the steps, building the fan base, base and reaching out to the ambassadors that, that would love you uh, for doing that. Christian, super, super great point. And the idea that you can empower certain key fans, those ambassadors yeah. or evangelists, you can empower them to bring other people. I, I met a coder the other day who created this brilliant thing. They just launched it on Juneteenth for a Juneteenth concert, but he created this brilliant thing where you can sell tickets to live streams. And when you buy uh, a ticket to the live stream, you can buy uh, the right to share it with a certain number of people. Uh, uh, there's a price for your ticket. There's a price to share it three times. There's a price to share it 10 times and a price to share it 50 times or unlimited. And people are getting the opportunity to bring others to the show in this really interesting way. And I think that um, 
that it's it, that's the kind of innovation that we need to see. All right. So this is Music Industry Talks. We hope to um, inspire people to think outside the box on ways to get through these weird times in the music business. Um, big thanks to Royal Unibrew and Carson and Freddie and, and everybody over there for giving us a platform to speak. Thank you, Nordic LA, um, of which I'm a part in full disclosure, for Christian coming on here and starting the company to begin with. I really appreciate your time and talents, you guys, and, and thanks for being part of the familyhood, and I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, so that uh, wraps it up for this time. We'll be back next week. Thank you all for tuning in. Peace.